Hey, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're going to be talking about my Playmaker Fusion integration asset again. And I want to talk a bit about how can you network sync variables. Um, as I started recording this video, I realized I don't list anywhere in the asset on how to accomplish this. Sorry, I paused for a minute to help put a kid to bed. So my kid to bed. So let's, uh, I don't know where I left off, but let's just, let's look at uh, a player that we instantiate. Um, doesn't have to be a player that you would net network sync variables on, but that's what you're probably gonna do with the most. Um, let's go to demo scenes, demo prefabs. And I just realized that my face is probably huge in this bottom left corner. And then let's go to player avatar. Okay, so here we have our player avatar. It's got an FSM on it. And let's just create a new one. And this FSM is going to be like player info. Maybe we don't even have any logic on it. I don't know. But let's just think of some variables that we might need to know about a player. Like how about a string that's uh, its player name. All right. And then let's network sync it. Um, what else might we need to know about a player? Maybe their current score. Okay, so um, scores are typically ints, so current score. And let's network sync that. Um, what else might we need to know about uh, this player? Maybe a bool um, is alive. All right, let's network sync that. Um, what's something else that we might need information of on a player? We can store a lot of these things. I can't remember exactly which ones they all are, but I will add them to the FAQ um, that I will create and upload after this video. Um, but what's something, wrecked is something we can network sync. I've never even used a wrecked variable, I don't think, ever for anything. Um, we can network sync a material, I think. I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, we can network sync an enum. So um, I was actually working with someone today, my first person who purchased this asset, um, they're doing a tennis game. Um, but uh, you can network sync an enum. Now with Playmaker, how do you make an enum? Like, what would the enum be? Let's say maybe the enum is the team that they're on. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just do team. Notice we can't network sync this. First, let's go create our enum. So Playmaker has a nice tool to make enums. And an enum is basically an int. But let's say the most common example for enums is like days of the week. So um, rather than use uh, a string that you have to compare because you might type something incorrectly, you can have an enum that's basically represented by an integer, but you can actually see the whole word. When I first started with Playmaker, I'm like, I don't see the value of enums. It took a good two years before I finally saw a value of enums. Um, so what is it? Is it in tools? Uh, I'm probably missing it somewhere. Add-ons? Assets? All right, let me pause while I look for it. I wonder if it's an add-on that has to be downloaded. I could have sworn Playmaker had a built-in enum helper, but I'm not seeing it here. Maybe it's got to be added on. Let me go check it out. I did find it in the ecosystem. So if you go to Playmaker add-ons ecosystem ecosystem browser um you have to install the ecosystem separately so i think you have to actually go get it from the hutan games website i always have it in my downloads folder so i just always add the ecosystem but you want this package enum creator wizard if you don't see it you might need to change your filters to only packages and i have to do that every time i'm looking for the array maker um, but there's the enum creator wizard. So that's probably what we need. I'm going to pause while it downloads. I mean, there it downloaded. Let's import it. All right. I don't even know what these other tools are. Like, I need to figure out what a linker wizard is, what this event proxy is. I need to look into that one day. But here's the enum creator wizard. All right. So let's see what happens here. All right. That's what I was looking for. All right. All right. So your namespace, I think this... This is generally, um, I don't usually put COM in my namespace. I usually just put googly eyes games and then the name of my project. Um, namespace sub element is invalid. Is that because I haven't typed anything yet? Um, we'll just do fusion test. Yeah. All right, then what do I want to name the enum? I'm just gonna call this teams. 
And then let me add some options. Let's do red, blue. Boy, I can't type. I'll pause while I type. All right, so there we go. I am now going to save this team's enum. Unity is compiling. And so what this probably did is it probably created a script. And we'll go look it up real quick. Um, it's already showing us a pre, like if we want to see a preview of it, if we see namespace, googly eyes games dot fusion test. And so I wonder what it named it um, because it's not a class. So I wonder what it's been named. Um, so I honestly couldn't find it from a quick browse, but if I go back into the enum creator, we can tell it to select it in the project. Oh, they just called it teams. Okay, Playmaker custom scripts, my game. Um, oh, there is this, when I set it up, that's where it was going in the project folder. So I probably should have changed that. And so there's, there's the team script and that's just what it looks like. All right, so now that we have an enum, we can network sync the enum. Um, we can just come over here and now we can choose our enum type. So unfortunately, what's this is going to be uh, the reason the namespace is important is because that's how it's going to show up in here. So googly eyes games, fusion test, teams, boom. And then what value do I want to give it? Let's say it's red, but I can't network sync it. Um, so what I have to do, and I actually need to go check my code. All right, so I just need to preference the name with network. So if I put network, I could then even go underscore um, team. And even though I don't have the network sync box, what we're about to do will identify this as a network synced variable. So now in order to do the network sync variable, on the same game object where the FSM is, uh, player info, we're going to add the component network sync no, what's it called? Fusion, Playmaker, Fusion, Setup Sync Variables. Okay, it's a long class component, but that's what we want. So you click on that. <clears throat> and this will actually tell you. So you could add this first and it'll give you a little hint um, before you actually go in and create them. Or if you've already created them, either, either order's fine. It's gonna work no matter what. Um, so it tells you the variables of types array, enum, and rect can still be used but you must preface their names with network. So anything else in here that lets you use network sync, if it's got a network sync box, you can sync it. Um, otherwise, array, enum, and rect can also be used as long as you include the word network, which, did I not do that? Network underscore team, enter. Now I did. <laughs> All right. Um, also, Fusion requires that you set the capacity and length of arrays and strings. Um, so like network array eight would be a networked array with a maximum capacity of eight. So at the end of our string here, we need to say what capacity we're going to allow for the string. If we didn't put anything, it's gonna default something. I forget what I've set the default. Um, it's probably eight. Um, but we can choose how long would we want the player name to be? Let's say up to 16. So on player name, I'm gonna underscore 16. And that tells my component here um, how to basically build the script to handle the network string. All right, and so then we need to tell it what FSMs to check. So I'm just going to add and I'm gonna drag my player info there. You can check multiple FSMs at a time if you want. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is click step one and it's gonna set up the network sync variables. So let's go ahead and do that. And so what this is doing is it's actually creating the C sharp script for us so that we don't have to write it because we're visual scripters. Um, but some of you who know a little bit of basic scripting, um, I'll show you here in a minute and how you can go in and edit this yourself if you don't have to go through this process each time. Um, so now that we've created it, it should now be safe to click step two. You can even see at the bottom, my face is probably in the way, but behind my face, um, it says you may now click the step two button. Like if we come over here to console, you should be able to see that I think above my camera, you may now click the step two button after Unity compiles. So if we now click step two, what it does is it's now added the component and it's removed the setup component. So 
Um, here we can see that Fusion, because of this blue banner, this is Fusion is recognizing this as a network behavior. You can see the FSM source that it's using. And then here are all the network synced variables right here. Um, so one thing to watch out for is if you're used to looking for values of your variables here, like if I went and set all these as input, I mean, technically these values that you see at runtime should still be accurate. Um, actually, they'll probably be more accurate than this because what I've seen from the inspector when dealing with networked variables with Fusion is the inspector doesn't seem to get updated every frame. And sometimes I've even had to click off of the object and then back onto the object to actually see the values get updated here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the script. Um, Playmaker users, don't be afraid. We're just going to take a look at this quick script real quick. It's not overly complicated for those of you that are familiar with writing in C-sharp. Um, I even put a comment at the top that this was created automatically using my component. Um, so I also have the components automatically create these headers um, to kind of make it easier to read in the inspector. But all that's required for these variables to be network sync is this little, what do we call these things? I don't forget, uh, uh, attributes. Okay, we, this little networked attribute um, above each variable. Um, so we have this networked bool. Also, bools have the word network in it, but notice ints don't. So some of it's a bit confusing. I think technically you could also use a non-network bool, but Fusion will say, hey, you should use a network bool. Um, it's, I know it's confusing because this is networked and says network bool, and this int is networked, but it's just called int, not network int. So I don't know why they did it that way, but they did. And notice here, the capacity of my string is set to 16 because of the underscore 16. All right. And notice it's also referencing the FSM variables as well. Um, so what it does is every frame, if we have state authority, meaning that we own this object, it sets our variables, our, our non-playmaker variables, to the values of our playmaker variables. If we don't own this object, then we set our playmaker variables to the networked variables from Fusion. And so that's just how it works. So if you're familiar with C-sharp and, and you just wanna hand write them yourself, you can just continue to add to this or write it from scratch. Otherwise, this component will take care of it for you. Um, you could even add another object, add the setup component again, and it won't recreate this script. It'll actually overwrite it, so it'll still stay the same. So if you don't remove this, that's fine. It should just overwrite it. In fact, let's go ahead and test that theory. Let's add a float. I'm just gonna call it my float. We're gonna put the little network sync thingamajigger on there. We're gonna add the component uh, playmaker fusion setup sync variables. Let's go ahead and notice we still have our 28212, which this is a, uh, it, it names this class off of the FSM, but just in case you keep all your FSMs named FSM because you're a naughty, naughty boy or girl, um, it also, I don't think it creates a random number. I think it actually uses the Unity's GUID and it attacks it on top of it just to cover in case you name everything the same. Um, all right, so we're gonna recheck the same FSM. Ooh, that's gonna be hard to grab. Can we drag this all the way down? We sure can. And so let's go ahead and set up the variables again. And we really shouldn't have to add the component back. Let's see what it does. Yeah, so it's here. There's our float. Oh, I accidentally put a capital L in there, and so it's weird looking. Um, if I clicked add components to game object, I'd wonder if we get an error because it's already there. Nope. It just it sees that it's already there, so it didn't do it again. But we still have our, our new variables there. All right, so um, cool, cool, cool. That is how it will work. Um, I'm not gonna do a build test on this because I already know it works because I'm using an active projects, but that's how you would network sync variables. Um, the most common reason you would use this for the simplest multiplayer games is 
whenever you are having the player log in and like say, what's your name, right? Put in a name and then maybe that name is displayed over the user. So then this would then be as simple as um, your very first state could check for a uh, string null. Is that not here? We got game object is null, but not string is null. So let's go to Playmaker, add-ons, ecosystem, ecosystem browser. And I'm going to search string null. And we should find a null check for string. String is null or empty right there. I'll pause where this compiles. All right, so it looks like it should be done now. So now if we come in here, and the reason we want to do this is in this first state, we might not have a value yet for the player name, um, but we'll get it really quick. We get it really quick after the player joins. So you, this state you might notice doesn't even stay up for a full second. So we want to get the player name um, and then call an event once it's not null or empty. We have name, right? So let's store it as this player's name. And so those of you just starting out, we wouldn't want a, in a lot of your FSMs, like when you're collecting input, you're gonna want a has state authority first to make sure that um, you don't want the logic running in this FSM most of the time unless you own it. But with this, we want all the players to know um, this new player's uh, name so that they can display it somewhere. All right, so we're gonna check this every frame and then we can come over here. Also a good habit to just, if you only have a state with one action, just copy the name and paste it in there. And then um, once we have the name, then let's say we have just a uh, 3D object, text mesh pro. I wish by default it wasn't so massive. Um, just because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little lazy and I'm just gonna scale it rather than resize it. Right, and we'll just put name, and let's just we'll auto size, set the min 0 0.01, let's set the max to 32, and center, center. And that's what it matters because we're not actually gonna hit play on this. And so once we have the name, then we can, do I have the text mesh pro actions in here? I do. So these don't come with Playmaker. Um, check some of my other videos, they're on the ecosystem. Um, but if you don't have the full set of, oh, we don't need that for this. This isn't a GUI one. So yeah, Playmaker has the regular text mesh pro set text mesh pro text. Yeah. Cause this isn't GUI. This is just regular. This should just work for this. So we're going to tell it to set this text to the player name to player name. All right. So this would be a really common FSM you'd set up. Um, you would have one that just gets all the player's information and then you would display it somewhere. All right, so I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I hope this video hasn't been too long. And, um, oh wait, could you even see this FSM while I was working on it? Oh, I keep forgetting that my face is so big. There it is. So you have a start state where you, you already saw the actions. And then after we have the name event, they come over here and we would set the text mesh pro. All right, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, and go watch all my other videos. We're so close to monetizing. And if you feel like supporting the channel, check out my itch page, mrphilipjoel.itch.io, or check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash philiphurlitz. And I'll be putting up exclusive stuff up there as well for um, my Patreons. Um, right now, there's something there, but I forget what it is. But uh, it's good stuff. All right. Uh, <laughs> Tell me in the comments what you want me to do next, um, whether it's a different tutorial for Playmaker, for C Sharp, another tutorial for my Fusion asset, let me know and I'll be happy to jump on and do it. Let me know in Discord too. Talk to you later.